Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in distress. Deliver me from the hands of my enemies and those who pursue me. O Lord, let me never be put to shame, for I call on you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Today we offer this Mass for the special intentions of uh, Rhoda Pounds, and we ask God for his pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I've greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, <clears throat> what I've done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Pardon the offenses of your peoples, we pray, O Lord, and in your, <clears throat> in your goodness set us free from the bonds of, of the sins we have committed in our weakness. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped. Then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble. They will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor, from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. I love you, O Lord, my strength, O Lord, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. My God, my rock of refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold, praise be the Lord, I exclaim, and I am saved from all my enemies. In my, my distress, I call upon the Lord, and he has us. The breakers of death surged round about me. The destroying floods overwhelmed me. The cuts of the nether world immersed me. The snares of death overtook me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and I cried out to my God. From his temple, he heard my voice, and my cry to him, reached his ears. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. You have the words of everlasting life. May the Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Jews picked up rocks to stone Jesus. Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good works from my Father. For which of these are you trying to stone me? The Jews answered him, We are not stoning you for a good work, but for blasphemy. You, a man, are making yourself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said you are gods? If it calls them gods to whom the word of God came, and scripture cannot be set aside, can you say that the one whom the Father has consecrated and sent into the world blasphemes, because I said, I am the Son of God? If I do not perform my works, my Father's works, do not believe me. But if I perform them, even if you do not believe me, believe the works so that you may realize and understand that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. Then they tried again to arrest him, but he escaped from their power. He went back across the Jordan to, to the place where John first baptized, and there he remained. Many came to him and said, John performed no sign, but everything John said about this man was true. And many there began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Every tree, Jesus once said, is revealed by its fruit. Uh, if you're not sure at some point what kind of tree this is, when it starts to, you know, oh, if the orange is coming from that tree, it's pretty obvious. It's an orange tree. It's an apple tree. It's a peach tree. Uh, all, it's the fruit. And that's when Jesus says to them, if you don't believe me, at least believe in the works. You know, one of the clear signs that Jesus was more than just another rabbi or a preacher or teacher was the fruit of his works, where the things he did, People could honestly, even the religious would say, we've never seen really anyone but God do that. You know, calm a storm, bring back the dead, open the eyes of the blind, you know, bring a hearing to the deaf or let the mute, the mute speak. And uh, again, that, and said so that you can't deny that these are the works of God. And God has apparently decided to do it through him. He's got to be from God. He can't be from anywhere else. Would people say that of us? You must be a child of God. I, I mean, you, you, that you, you can't, you, you, because the work that you do just, it, it makes it obvious. You know, we clearly see what kind of tree you are, where you are rooted. You know, sometimes people, you know, you think of, you hear the term, uh, not just Christian, but radical Christian. That's a radical Christian. And many times that's not a positive assessment. But the truth of the matter is, every true Christian is a radical Christian because the word radical means, uh, it comes from the Latin radix. And it means roots, rooted in. A Christian is someone who is rooted in Christ. And it's by being rooted in Christ that the fruit of the tree that you are is the fruit of Christ. It's the works of God. And again, once you see them, people can, can be I'm unsure when they just see a tree without any fruit. But when the fruit comes, the fruit will tell the story. What kind? If it's rotten fruit, if it's good fruit. And as we... Uh, again, uh, soon approach Holy Week. We've been journeying. Holy Week. We've been journeying through the season of Lent. You know, to as we call it again, a campaign of Christian service and also a campaign of personal holiness, seeking to grow quite, uh, closer. Hopefully, to see, seeking to deepen our roots, or even to plant our roots in Christ, to deepen our roots so that the fruit, the works of our lives, would reflect uh, His will, His commandments. The same fruit, the fruit of justice, the fruit of love, the fruit of charity. Um, the fruit of compassion, the fruit of empathy, um, the fruit of sacrifice, the kind of sacrifice that love requires, uh, and uh, the fruit of courage. That's what happens in me. But what, how does that, how do we get rooted? How, where those kind of fruits would be manifest in our lives? We see a powerful example in the, in the first reading from the book of uh, the prophet Jeremiah, you know, who starts with, you know, I hear whisperings of many, terror on every side. 
you know, people saying, denounce him, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends on, the, on, watch, or on watch for any misstep of mine that they will call out right away. Maybe we can trap him and, and we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. Wow, this is the things that the prophet is hearing. And it can be overwhelming, can't it? It can be just, you know, fill us with stress. And um, think of people again who are, you know, if we know someone's out to get them and it's not their imagination, it's, it's really real. And so what does he do? And what he does uh, is exactly what we said in response to your Psalm, Psalm 18. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and he heard my voice. You know, I said, uh, I think last, uh, Sunday, you know, that sometimes again, when we're in distress, we cry, but really it's better to cry out. Meaning not just cry, but to call upon the Lord. Why don't we do that? I can think in just my own experience, many times we just, we can be afraid and we sort of just close up and sit in our fear. You know, we can be, uh, you know, worried and just be consumed with our worry and anxiety and just kind of sit there. It's like, did you say your prayers today? No, I was just too afraid. I was, I was just consumed with my worry. And, you know, I just think about it. I tried to pray and I said, Lord, I'm afraid. Lord, Lord, Lord I'm worried. Lord, I'm, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm in distress. You know, it's better. True prayer is doesn't, it's not spending time telling God who I am. Uh, it's acknowledging who God is. What I mean is, again, if we say, again, who are you? If your answer is, who, me? Oh, I'm afraid. Who are you? You know, uh, I'm worried. I am distressed. Uh, I am, I am overwhelmed. You know, I'm a lost cause. You know, I'm a failure. I'm stupid. Really? Who gave you those names? Did God give you those names? Absolutely not. And so the Psalm 18 today gives us a better formula. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. And what did the psalmist say? Lord, you know, you are my strength. You are my rock. You are my fortress. You are my deliverer. I'm not going to waste time telling you who I think I am. I'm going to remind myself by telling you who you are. My strength, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. You are the horn of my salvation. You are my shield. You are my stronghold. You know, you are the breaker of, you are the breaker of death. You are my deliverer. Think, see where that leads you. It reminds you that you are not alone and that God is there with you. That's how Jesus overcame the, the stress and the stress of, 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 the, of the passion. Not, you know, be reminding that who, remembering who his father is. And so we are called to do the same. And that's why it said that the gospel began by saying people picked up rocks to stone Jesus, but he never ran away. He never runs away because he knows God is with him. May we learn the same, uh, the same lesson. Don't simply identify yourself as distress. That might be what you're facing, but that is not who you are. You are a child of God, a God who is your rock, who is your fortress, who is your shield, who is your deliverer. Let us bring before the Lord our prayers and petitions. We pray for the church throughout the world that she may go forth in the power of the Holy Spirit, spreading the good news of God's enduring love and presence. We pray to the Lord. We pray for peace in our world and into the scourge of violence, especially violence in our streets, in our cities, in our country, and around the world. We pray to the Lord. We pray for deliverance from the COVID-19 pandemic. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our parish school, our faculty and staff, especially the children in our school and their families. We pray to the Lord. <clears throat> we pray for those who lack the basic necessities of life, like food and shelter, uh, employment, health care, friends and family to support them. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have grown discouraged, those who have been overwhelmed by their circumstances, by their distress, uh, those who are afraid, those who are despairing that their eyes may be open to the presence of God who has never left them, that their ears may be open to be reminded of who, the God, who their God is and to remind them whose child they are. We pray to the Lord. For all those who've asked for our prayers, those who need our prayers the most, we pray to the Lord. 
and for all those who have died, that they may share in the fullness of the banquet of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Good and gracious God, thank you for always hearing our prayers. We ask them with confidence because we ask through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it shall become for us the bread of life. Brother, Mrs. Water and Wine, become the share in the need of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it shall become for us our spiritual drink. Yes. Let us pray, pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, O merciful God, that we may be worthy to serve ever fittingly at your altars and there to be saved by constant participation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. <clears throat> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the, through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks <clears throat> as an ex exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts. <clears throat> Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died. In your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. Through your mercy, keep us free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. <clears throat> the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. Jesus bore our sins in his own body on the cross so that dead to sin we might live for righteousness. By his wounds we have been healed.
Let us pray. May the unfailing protection of the sacrifice we have received never leave us, O Lord, and may it always drive far from us all that would do us harm. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go now in peace, glorifying the Lord with your lives. Even now he's calling, even now his spirit is drawing. Just obey, don't delay, even now Jesus is calling. Just obey. Don't delay even now. Jesus is calling.